what I believe God is wanting to do and is using Come and Live to be a part of is seeing a generation that is so passionate about Jesus. Not just like religious zealotry, but a genuine response to a revelation of the character of God. When that actually happens, passion can't help but be awoken in you and your desire is to share and to give and to pour out on that generation. I think what came back most consistently for me was that Come and Live instilled a level of passion for Jesus in their hearts that they had not experienced. And that to me is it's a huge compliment. It's very humbling. And it also reminds me that even though I may not feel very passionate some days, our team may not feel very passionate. We have an incredible opportunity to be transparent, to be honest, to be straightforward, but to live our lives in such a way that people go, that's what it can look like to live a lifestyle that is completely devoted to Jesus and pursuing Him with all of our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. With Come Live coming there and doing that, it was kind of a part of that. It's like someone put a key in the ignition and kind of started the engine. And I really believe that God's wanting to raise up way more young people and, and uh, musicians and all kinds of people to be passionate about the kingdom of God, to be passionate about the things of God, and just to like be generous and to love. I mean, we saw time and time again where we'd be in ministry with people and they would receive encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit, and then they would immediately feel this like unsure to be doing that thing with someone else. Like we pray for somebody and they would receive healing or power and then they would immediately have this desire to pray for their neighbor or pray for their father or pray for their, uh, you know, their, their wife. I mean, there was one specific example. Um, after the showcase at Parachute, we went outside and, you know, you can see in the video, it was, it, they, we kind of breeze over it in the documentary, but we're praying for lots and lots of people. And I remember one of the first people we prayed for was this, um, this guy who had, uh, I think he had shoulder pain. We prayed for this guy and he gets healed immediately. And there was a woman with him, we were gonna pray for her next. And I look at the woman and I look at the guy and I'm like, hey, do you guys know each other? Because we didn't really know, you know, and, and the guy like, kind of like laughs at me and he's like, yeah, like this is my wife. I remember it just kind of came out of my mouth. I mean, I just like blurted it out almost, but I looked at the guy and I was like, dude, you're gonna love this. So here, here we are, we prayed for this guy, he receives healing. And then immediately we're about to pray for his wife and I say, dude, you know what, you do it because you've got what we had. He puts his hands on her, he prays for her, she gets healed immediately. And then I see those two praying for people throughout the crowd for the rest of the night. Like to me, that is what equipping and releasing is about. It's, it's about giving away what we freely, we give away what we have freely received, which is power in the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, 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 it's power to just be who we're called to be. We're called to embody a lifestyle of love. John 15 talks about how God's, how, God's chosen us to bear fruit and fruit that will last. And I think there's a place where you have to look, you have to look at inspiration from the perspective of fruit and go, what was the fruit? And so already we saw that sort of, you pray for someone and then they're that much more willing to go pray for someone else.